was started in the early 70s by several Edgewood residents who felt there was a need for a better ambulance service in Scarsdale. Um, at the time, and until the late 70s, the uh, people who were injured or sick in Scarsdale were transported to the hospital, generally White Plains, uh, by the Scarsdale Police Department, who maintained two station wagons with stretchers in the back, known as stretcher cars, and the police department would come and take you to the hospital. Today, the Ambulance Corps has three um, ambulances. Uh, two are kept in our building, one is kept either in the driveway at the building or over at the highway garage. Two of the ambulances are, are equipped for advanced life support, meaning the, the equipment that a paramedic would use is in the ambulance. The third ambulance is set up for basic life support. The two at the building are advanced life support vehicles. We uh, are unique as a volunteer ambulance agency that we are able to staff all three ambulances, generally speaking, on a moment's notice. SVAC has over 100 members, and these come from all walks of life. They're men, they're women, they're entrepreneurs, they're attorneys, they're stay-at-home moms, they're real estate agents, they're students. Uh, so there is no one type of person who is a volunteer here. We then take these volunteers and we match them up with our paid paramedics um, in order to provide the highest level of pre-hospital care in New York State. It works out very well in that the paramedics are here to help mentor them and get them where they need to be, but yet we've got a very compassionate volunteer workforce um, that is willing to be here and is able to uh, assist at a moment's notice. The ideal volunteer for the Ambulance Corps is somebody who is willing to learn and constantly learn, needs to be able to lift approximately 125 pounds, needs to have a right positive attitude, the ability to stay calm, which everybody who can stay calm, but you can't stay calm this first year. Every time the pager goes off, there's definitely that adrenaline rush. This Ambulance Corps, we try to take new volunteers and move them on to be uh, drivers, usually within six months. We run in-house EMT classes, we run in-house first aid and CPR classes, so we're able to get people trained fairly quickly. A volunteer EMS agency has a different philosophy than a, a government EMS agency or a for-profit agency. Uh, the people who are here are here because they want to be here, they want to help their neighbors. It's the purest form of neighbors helping neighbors that are out there. It means that they've got a more compassionate level of service um, and they really care about the people that they are, that they're treating and, uh, and the, what their job is here as a volunteer. To join the Ambulance Corps, we have a minimum requirement of you have taken a professional rescuer CPR class. It's one of the misconceptions about becoming a volunteer at an Ambulance Corps is that you have to have a lot of medical knowledge or prior knowledge of medicine in order to become a volunteer. In reality, you don't need to have any experience. We're going to take you wherever you are and move you to where you need to be in order to be a productive volunteer. So of course that's going to start with CPR and the basics of what's around the ambulance and then you're going to move on to other things like being able to take blood pressure, being able to assist the paramedic until you finally get to a level that you feel comfortable, be become a certified EMT and can then help direct patient care. You'll never be asked to do anything that you don't feel comfortable with and you'll never be forced or pressured to do anything that is outside of your scope. Um, the good news here is that we work at your pace. So wherever you start, wherever you come in with, whatever knowledge that is, we're going to, through our training, get you where you need to be in order to feel comfortable uh, helping uh, on a call. We are now working towards having an advanced EMT program, which will allow members who take the AEMT class to start IVs and intubate patients, meaning provide an air, a secure airway. Our funding comes from three sources. First, donations from our community members, predominantly through a fund drive, but donations come uh, all times of the year. Secondly, we get funding through insurance chargebacks. So as we transport patients, we're able to charge insurance companies and get reimbursed for that. And the third way in which we are funded is through volunteer workforce. Uh, but the fact that we have such a compassionate and uh, thorough set of volunteers here allows us to be able to perform the job uh, without getting paid additional paid labor and can do it at an affordable rate without having a tax line uh, here in the Scarsdale Village. An organization such as Scarsdale Ambulance is unique. The agencies around us uh, in New York State and nationwide are struggling in getting volunteers. That's not to say that we don't need you. Uh, we need all the volunteers we can get, but we generally are able to staff ourselves around the clock. 
the level of mutual aid, uh, meaning a neighboring community is unable to provide its ambulance at that time, so they call us, our mutual aid rate is extremely high, probably amongst the highest in the, in the county. And it's because A, we are centrally located in southern Westchester, and B, um, we're here, we're staffed, we have crews, we can get a second and a third crew out uh, on a moment's notice. We are able to uh, fill the request for an ambulance, whether it's in Scarsdale or Nourishell or Eastchester or Irvington. Unfortunately, we're not getting enough donations in our fund drive makes it very difficult to, to run this operation at the same level. Uh, we're constantly struggling to make sure people understand what we're providing and being able to uh, get that message out to them so that they realize that we're not taking money from their taxes. We're purely working at this donation level and we need their assistance. And on the same token, we need more volunteers. We can't run without people. Uh, and so trying to find new volunteers, people who are willing to give up their time for this important thing, to learn the ropes and to learn um, you know, what it takes to become an effective caregiver, uh, that is, that's one of the things that is becoming a challenge. Um, fortunately, we've got a good group of people, uh, we're a training center and we're able to bring more people in um, and we're continuing to grow.